another couple of yes. minutes and then yeah. hi hi abhijit how are you hi, mutu hi. how are you mutu hi 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 I, I I won't be able to stay because I'm on a, a panel for sure, Medica. Sure. Medica. So yeah. I just wanted to say hello to you and and sure, sure. that that panel starts yeah, we'll shortly. Yeah, we'll so so I talk to you later. So you take yeah. care. Have a have bye. a good session. Bye. And thank you so much. Yeah sure. Okay. Take take care. Bye. So good evening, everybody. I welcome you all to the Knowledge Tuesday session. Uh, I'm Archana, part of HTIC MedTech Incubator. Uh, for the today's session, uh, we have with us the speaker for the today's session is Mr. Abhijit P. Deshpande, who is Professor, Department of Chemical Engineering, IIT Madras. And the topic for the today's session, how technology startup can play a role to support rural India. Uh, so before we start, uh, I would request all the participants to kindly stay on mute and please unmute yourself while you speak. Uh, so I'll be, uh, I've already shared the screen. So uh, over to you, sir, uh, to start the session. So over to you, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, so uh, first, let me thank uh, for this opportunity. Uh, it's uh, a great pleasure to uh, talk to uh, people interested in uh, entrepreneurship, uh, innovation. And, and so uh, we, we hope that uh, while we share uh, our experience, uh, we will also uh, get to know some of the uh, other things that uh, you people are uh, interested in, are keen about. So uh, I have with me uh, Shrinivas also, uh, who is uh, involved with uh, this Rural Technology Action Group at uh, IIT Madras. And so together, uh, both of us uh, will give you a capsule of uh, uh, what we do and uh, what, based on our experiences, uh, what do we feel regarding uh, technology startup uh, in the rural ecosystem uh, in the Indian context. And uh, so uh, how we will do this is first uh, just introduce uh, the RUTAG itself and uh, its activities. And uh, then uh, we will uh, give you uh, one specific case study in a little bit more detail uh, where we went on a customer discovery uh, process. And uh, then the lastly, we will uh, then come to a little more abstract uh, set of points, uh, which again will be based on uh, our own experience and the rural ecosystem that uh, we generally face when we are looking at uh, technology uh, in the rural context. So uh, please feel free to, uh, uh, I, I think uh, it is already mentioned that you can, uh, uh, okay, that's regarding the feedback. Uh, so if, if at all you have any questions, uh, you can also uh, just uh, type them in uh, 
uh, what uh, we will try to do is maybe uh, in between we will take a break and uh, try to answer some of the questions uh, as we go along. So let's try to keep it as interactive as it can be. Uh, because as I said, uh, we, we are looking forward to hearing uh, from uh, you also in terms of uh, what may be the key uh, points that come to your mind when we are discussing this topic. So, uh, Srinivas, we'll go ahead. Next slide. So uh, just to uh, summarize, uh, there are various ways now uh, an academic institution such as uh, IIT Madras uh, interfaces uh, with the overall uh, uh, rural ecosystem. Uh, we have uh, student activities uh, uh, which are driven by largely students, uh, but on the other hand, we have uh, business incubators, uh, which is uh, like HTIC also we have in rural domain itself. Uh, rural technology business incubator and then we also have social entrepreneurship uh, cell uh, and uh, uh, basically training and resource uh, for social entrepreneurship and this is still uh, quite a bit more in uh, human resources and uh, capacity building and those kind of areas uh, but as far as of course IIT is concerned its uh, core competency lies in uh, technology solutions technology development science and technology uh, Therefore, uh, science and technology in rural development, we do through a couple of different ways. Uh, one is activities such as uh, what RUTAC does. And also these days, of course, uh, we have uh, lots of projects in which uh, we get funding from uh, either CSR or other such uh, socially relevant uh, uh, funding uh, sources. And uh, we, in those projects, we try to seek uh, technology solutions for uh, rural areas. And so, uh, next slide, please. So, uh, just to give you a glance, uh, I mean, we've been active for about 15 years. Uh, we are just one of the uh, seven root acts. There are uh, six others in other IITs. And uh, mainly, uh, our uh, motto is to basically, if there is a need uh, being uh, articulated, uh, we should try to fill it. And so a lot of our work is uh, based on need identification. And uh, so there is a demand generating organization or individual. Uh, and then uh, there is a technical solution provider, which is uh, in an academic institution. So we try to put these two together. So there is a problem which is felt by various people. And then there is a solution which can be developed uh, by a by a faculty student or a faculty student team, then we try to find that fit. And uh, over the years, uh, these uh, six, seven years, uh, we have had, uh, excuse me, uh, over the years, we have developed uh, several uh, 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 prototypes, several, uh, we have disseminated several of these uh, 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 developed solutions into uh, the field. Uh, we have uh, also set up a uh, common facility center that we will discuss in a bit. So, so our uh, range of activities has not been just limited to, you know, developing or designing and uh, thinking of a solution. We have gone to the next stage of uh, uh, implementing it uh, in, in with the user. Uh, uh, however, there is a significant uh, more effort required from uh, doing field trials and dissemination to a limited extent to going the next step, which is what I think most of you are interested in, is given that a technology solution which has been shown to work reasonably, can it actually be taken beyond uh, by an entrepreneur and uh, can it be scaled up? Can it be expanded? Can it be sustainable in terms of time and economics? So, so those are the questions probably most important on your mind. And uh, so that's where uh, I said that, you know, what we do uh, lies quite often one step before that. And, and but doing this, we have realized the significant challenges which are there for startups in the rural domain. And that's what we hope to discuss uh, in the presentation today. If you look at the sectors, uh, they are basically uh, spanning uh, 
uh, uh, all different uh, livelihoods, uh, assistive technology, health, uh, sanitation, energy, and and this depends on uh, the uh, problem statement that comes to us. So uh, next slide, uh, Shrinivas. So uh, the key uh, uh, activity that we do is to first uh, look at the problem statement and identify uh, them. And we do this through holding workshops. We are constant touch with the uh, governmental agencies. Uh, we also try to uh, get uh, these problem statements posed because of uh, our websites and any other contacts that are there. And then uh, we catalyze this by providing support to either faculty member or student teams to say that, you know, let's uh, let's get going and try to find a solution. And uh, then, of course, uh, having found the solution, our most important role is also to go that extra mile and then actually have this uh, design tried out uh, by the user and in the field. And so that's where uh, this platform uh, for interaction among faculty, student, uh, uh, people working in uh, rural technological context, uh, all, all that uh, and along with NGOs and government agencies comes in very handy. So that strong liaisoning uh, will be absent sometimes in academic institution because it's beyond the scope of, let's say, one individual student or one individual faculty. But we being a, a nodal resource, we can provide such a facility. Next slide. So uh, Ruta Gayati Madras, therefore, uh, if you look at uh, it, it sort of contacts NGOs, individual government agencies and gets a problem statement. And then uh, it sort of mobilizes student uh, and uh, faculty uh, to, to start uh, looking at the technology solution. And a byproduct of, of course, this is also an immersive experience of getting to know uh, the technology thirst, uh, getting to know the needs and wishes and, and also getting to know the uh, complexity associated with uh, technology penetration in the rural area. So therefore, we, we also claim that, you know, by uh, doing our activities, we are providing uh, faculty and students an immersive experience. And, and, and uh, presumably, if you look at a lot of the discussion in uh, India today, uh, the focus is on... Uh, creating capacity for rural uh, technological innovation as well as technology adoption. So, so from all sides, uh, there is a, a need for uh, 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 the rural areas to get connected more strongly with technology. And, and so therefore, providing this immersive experience will, uh, is, is a very valuable add in that. And uh, so, as I mentioned also, we we also tend to work uh, with uh, innovator uh, with fabricators for example for ease of fabrication so that it doesn't remain an academic uh, design but it actually can be manufactured uh, and and that's also built into the overall prototypes that are uh, uh, actually tried out in the field so next slide shrinivas So yeah, so this is uh, some uh, examples. This is actually uh, somewhat uh, older uh, set of uh, project presentations and I'm just keeping it here. And maybe I'll uh, break out and, and ask if there are any uh, sort of comments or uh, questions at this point that any of you have. Before I proceed further, uh, looking at some specific uh, technologies and what we have done with those. So any, any questions from your side? Or any comments? Anything from participant side? Yeah, yeah. I'm asking the participants if they have any question. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. So you could type the questions in, or you could uh, just unmute yourself, ask the question, and mute again. So any one of them is fine. Uh, hello, sir. I'm uh, Dr. Akshin Sudarshan from AI Prosthetics. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So we'll. Uh, you know, good, reasonable uh, prosthesis come under assistive technology and uh, helpful for the rural industry, sir, rural areas. Uh, it's occupation wise. So, depending yeah. on the uh, occupation, if he's a farmer or uh, if he's a laborer, depending right. on the occupation, if we build him a prosthesis, um, right. will it come under assistive technology and help him out? Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. So, yeah, one of the things that uh, we we do uh, uh, recognize this, uh, and and maybe this is even larger in the context of rural when you uh, compare to see, let's say, an urban uh, uh, 
uh, context uh, is, is this uh, basically the uh, uh, I'll give you an example with uh, maybe a sensor let's say a sensor for uh, moisture measurement in the field let's say or uh, and supposedly you know humidity plays a very important role in agriculture now the the question could be asked is you know should uh, do do i you know if i develop a sensor can i can it not be uh, penetrated throughout uh, rural uh, and improve the agricultural productivity so in some sense answer is yes uh, but uh, but the, it's more complicated because one uh, does the user in this case the farmer really feel the need for it and uh, even if you let's say based on our some initial interventions does the farmer get convinced that the extra expenditure or the extra technology which is involved is really going to benefit all that much or the expert systems that they have in terms of the, their own uh, uh, hunches judgments they are sufficient and they are working reasonably well so so basically in all of these things you have to ask you know what your competition is and what your customer wants and and that will decide really the answer to your question correct sir thanks yeah. sir. thank you any other comment or question? Uh, okay, then maybe we'll proceed forward. Uh, as I mentioned that uh, even if you have questions in between, please uh, feel free to just uh, uh, type them and uh, we will proceed further. So Srinivas, next slide. So uh, I'll just give you a brief uh, glimpse about uh, some uh, uh, products uh, that uh, we have been working on. And uh, uh, the small scale paddy thresher is, uh, is uh, something we have developed in the last uh, one year. And uh, here again, the demand came from uh, individual farmers. So the left hand side shows you the small scale paddy thresher. And uh, so there are options here uh, so paddy threshing of course is done and uh, that's how uh, it's basically removal of the paddy uh, grain from the stock and uh, so you can do it manually uh, or uh, the other option is to have very large scale uh, uh, thresher uh, and, and uh, what uh, this user uh, farmer uh, pointed out to us was that if you have a small land holding which is let's say two to five acres sometimes the access of the thresher to your farm is limited or uh, the hourly rates of rental or whatever uh, the, the, the way it's available, the large scale thresher, it may not be really uh, sort of uh, economic for you to rent. There could also be another issue that let's say as a small scale farmer, if you are let's say trying to do an organic uh, Indian variety of rice because you want to maximize let's say uh, income by doing a niche crop. So uh, let's say you want, let's say in Tamil Nadu context, for example, Jira Kasamba, you want to say organic Jira Kasamba. So it's going to be a very high value crop. And, and maybe the for this stock, the large scale paddy thresher may sort of lead to an efficiency of 80%, 90% uh, as opposed to 95%, which you can get by manual. So, so again, therefore, uh, it's, it's always uh, difficult for you to assess uh, the access the large pressure which is available. The manual process on the other hand is heavily dependent on uh, the availability of labor for that particular time when your crop is out. And uh, these days because of uh, various uh, push and pull uh, in the rural context, the labor al availability cannot be guaranteed on a given day because of uh, other factors being present. And, and so so then, uh, you know, if you have a solution uh, which uh, can provide uh, threshing to small scale farmers, will it work? So with that uh, as a problem statement, then uh, we put together Professor Shankar Krishna Pillai and a couple of interns uh, from a Coimbatore College uh, institution. And uh, they started designing, they developed first uh, the CAD model of it. Then we actually got it fabricated and then we did uh, one round of trials and then modified it further and, and so the photographs that you are seeing is sort of 1.1 uh, version but after that we did 1.2 and, and now currently we are in fact doing the two uh, the second version of this where a uh, lot more improvements have taken place so this kind of a product now is ready to see the market i mean when if you do search for this you will see that there are several uh, uh, 
claims of such a device being available worldwide, uh, including Africa or uh, Southeast Asia markets, uh, but nothing seems to be available easily off the shelf. Uh, so there is one company in Chennai also which claims this as one of their products, but when we inquired, they said, oh no, it's not available and things like that. So, so there does seem to be a scope and whenever we talk to now rural stakeholders, uh, the message seems to be that yes, this will be something very useful. Now, uh, to go next from here is where the challenge lies. And, and that's what we are now attempting uh, with uh, this product. On the right hand side is, is another example of a product. Uh, this is electronic jacquard hand loom. Uh, jacquard is basically what is used to get a, a pattern uh, in weaving, textile weaving. So on a sari or a bed sheet, we have different patterns or sometimes we will have uh, elephants or any other figure uh, that, that all is manipulated based on jacquard because it can pick threads of different colors and different patterns. So the weave pattern that you get is pretty much decided by a jacquard. Now, uh, this is of course very common in saris and uh, uh, bed sheets, but what we have done here is done this for grass mat weaving. Uh, it's called Pai, uh, so Pattamadai Pai more specifically for uh, those who are from Tamil Nadu. Uh, it is basically a grass mat and uh, this, is a, this is a type of product uh, which is, uh, can be considered to be a somewhat uh, niche product. Again, uh, it, it's very costly, the, especially the finer grass uh, variety, uh, a, a Pai can cost around 3000 rupees. And why it's so costly is because it's a fine grass which cannot be mechanized and which cannot be done uh, using any machine. Uh, otherwise, like what happens in case of saris or uh, uh, bed sheets, you can of course have power looms and then you can do all this automatically. But those mats are with coarser grass and they come in around 300, 400 rupees. So therefore, there is a factor of 10 whenever you have a finer grass mat and uh, it is uh, being done uh, by an artisan. That's how the overall historically it was. And uh, maybe some years ago, 100 years ago and all, uh, the artisans used to sort of uh, uh, earn significant uh, using this, uh, 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 the, this trade because the cost is extremely high. Uh, also, it got integrated with the cultural practices. So uh, events like marriages, uh, religious places, festivals. So there are uh, specific uh, prints being made during that time by artisan has to imagine, you know, if, uh, let's say, for example, even for an election, we uh, this was done where the map of India was put on a grass mat and uh, you can have an artist do that. But now what we have done is we have incorporated an electronic jacquard, which means you take an image of whatever you want to put on mat and you can, uh, through that image, you can uh, feed it into through uh, this blue section that you see on the electronic jacquard le left uh, figure uh, photograph. The blue thing on the top is that electronic jacquard. So then that actually controls what color grass gets uh, picked up and what kind of weave pattern you get so that the pattern making now is completely automated. While the middle photograph shows that the weaver actually has to do uh, the compression and the uh, pulling together and so so in general it still remains within the scope of hand loom but at the same time the pattern making can be very very uh, different and so the rightmost photograph for example shows you this uh, figure with an umbrella sort of uh, uh, dancing figure and, and so any any complicated uh, pattern can be done now so again, this is a product uh, uh, which is uh, which is extremely uh, important from a cultural context. And so Tamil Nadu government, for example, uh, recognized this as one of those arts which has to be supported by state government. And in fact, through that, we have got funding to set up uh, a common facility center for the weaver community. So this also comes, you can see that many of the rural uh, 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 technology solutions get disseminated in a very different model compared to what we are used to, uh, where an individual pays for the technology and then starts using it. Uh, in the rural area, a lot of uh, it happens through common facility center or a shared model uh, or a rental basis. So, so, so very different set of models are sometimes required when we access the rural markets. 
and so in this case we are working with the uh, the weaver community and uh, through their uh, society we are actually implementing this technology solution and uh, the third example uh, which is on the left uh, bottom is a cold press oil expeller and uh, if you search on amazon you will see such a product out there there are some chinese make uh, products which are already there and uh, we've also got this under similar price range uh, so the products which are there are 20 25000 rupees and this one also can cost 25 30000 rupees uh, the idea here is to not increase the temperature and this is something which you can like a mixy on the table at home this can also be like a tabletop uh, model and so that's the advantage of uh, such an oil expeller if you want uh, to sort of uh, do uh, a quick oil because oil and uh, healthy oil is a, is a very uh, big demand these days and if you look at prices of organic uh, cold expel oil it's quite high so in fact this could also be a livelihood option for uh, for a person from uh, working from home and actually make uh, five six liters per day and uh, have it distributed so so that's something which is a model which is uh, possible uh, next slide the shrinivas so uh, so therefore uh, as far as uh, our current status goes in these kind of products we we uh, in terms of you know making sure that uh, whatever we have done uh, goes to the next stage uh, in terms of small scale paddy thresher we are developing the second generation uh, device uh, we are uh, trying to talk to CSR agencies to do some initial uh, dissemination of 10-20 uh, models, 10-20 uh, such units to different uh, farmers so that uh, it can pick up and uh, then take the next stage of uh, uh, next stage of uh, uh, the uh, overall taking uh, uh, the product to the market and. Uh, well, one question I see, uh, do you have any completed but yet to be commercialized projects related to AI ML digital solutions for rural communities? So no, right now we don't have anything which is directly uh, commercialized uh, projects. And uh, generally what you will uh, see is uh, uh, very, very rarely you will find academicians uh, and faculty and students completely ready with the technology. So most often you it will be in a prototype or a field trial stage. And uh, yes, some of them do uh, start up their uh, things based on that. But if you are looking for uh, something off the shelf immediately, it's, it's unlikely. Uh, mostly it will remain as a prototype or maybe at most the, some field trials have been done. So most of our products are also like that. Uh, the hearing aid that I'm talking about is in the uh, is in the sort of electronic domain, but uh, right now we don't have anything related to AI, ML, and digital solutions. Uh, there is uh, one particular uh, uh, activity uh, which uh, is uh, which could be potentially related to uh, AI, uh, machine learning, or or also it could be related to augmented uh, reality, AR is uh, i mean this is this is something again a hypothetical uh, thought process and we we are initiating some activity in this uh, if you if you look at uh, what happens in the rural context is uh, the need changes from uh, 10 15 kilometers to 10 15 kilometers i mean uh, anything that you let's say think in terms of soil right Soils change, uh, the uh, rice varieties change, uh, so any crop based things change. Uh, if you if you think in terms of uh, uh, any, let's say, tool uh, languages change, the emphasis changes. So so there are uh, customization for a local need is, is a big uh, sort of uh, uh, issue related to rural context. Uh, we, we tend to always, you know, argue in terms of like a mobile as a product which can reach everybody and 5 billion people, 6 billion people in the world, all of them can use the same product. But actually what makes mobile a useful thing is all those apps which are making it more and more local uh, usage oriented. So similarly, in any product that we think of, uh, the local context and uh, local use is always uh, sort of required. And so let's say I have this paddy thresher as a model. 
okay now uh, somebody sitting in gujarat wants to uh, also adopt this or somebody sitting in sikkim wants to adopt it can we use ar tool to actually try to uh, do some small experiments and try to actually see whether the stock that they have they feed in some information and we try to do the run right uh, using machine learning using ai and then see give some hints to that person that you know make some of these changes and then make a prototype instead of just uh, blindly copying this so so we are thinking in terms of you know some uh, if we if we look build a resource which is let's say open source for basic designs can can it actually penetrate much more in all these different rural areas by local people using this open source for further innovation so so that's where some of these ai ml uh, digital solutions may become very useful but uh, they, they, it's not a ready made solution i'm i'm talking about this as a very futuristic activity so uh, next slide uh, shrinivas so so as i mentioned in the rural context uh, this model uh, of a common facility center uh, works uh, uh, quite well uh given that the capacity for uh, uh, uh capital investment uh, may not be always as high and so for example we have one in microwaveable pottery uh, i didn't describe about this product and technology as such but this is again a uh something which is uh, for uh, potter potters but uh, given them giving them a value add in terms of microwaveable pottery but at the same time just give them a broad range where they can do their traditional pots also and do microwaveable pottery so we are uh, with uh, funding from iocl we are setting up a common facility center uh, and uh, we have a partner uh, implementation partner uh, with whose support we had also done the initial technology development in this case the technology basically implies the formulation of soil and the how it's fired and so on so that it becomes microwaveable and as i mentioned on the right uh, this is uh, again a, a common facility center for uh, the mat weaver society which we are doing and uh, we have already established uh, uh, eight uh, units uh, under this and a uh, significant number of weavers are using uh, this facility yeah next slide shrinivas so i think uh, what i'll do now is give it a pause from my end but uh, shrinivas uh, and uh, our team from rutag was involved in this uh, case study so uh, we'll just share this with you before we end uh, uh, on some general comments uh, before uh, shrinivas you start there seems to be another question so i'll just take a look at it uh, any innovations done are on the way useful for aqua farmers or coastal fisheries in general not uh, we specifically but uh, there are uh, other rotax who have uh, uh, these uh, kind of technologies we also have uh, nird the national institute of rural development which has a couple of technological solutions so if you want more details just uh, write an email to us uh, and and we'll get back uh, to you with more details so shrinivas you can take over now yeah yeah thank you sir thank you sir. can you hear me ah uh, yes yes yeah. yeah yeah okay so i'll i'll take you uh, all through the uh, journey of our uh, two months exercise to find out whether there is a need uh, for a particular problem that was posed to us i mean uh, by uh, one of the research institute based in ranchi central tassa research and training institute uh, they they posed this problem whether uh, accurate sorter from grader can be developed for uh, silkworm cocoons or not so we took this activity and then we we did uh, some customer discovery uh, in the span of two months uh, across uh, three different states and uh, across five different customer segments i'll i'll take you through uh, through the journey and we'll discuss about this in detail uh, next slide next slide please yeah so our idea was to develop uh, design and develop this accurate sorter grader for silkworm cocoons so the the initial uh, problem uh, statement and also hypothesis was uh, the farmers are getting less price for their slots uh, in the market because of the presence of uh, various uh, defective cocoons in the lots uh, and uh, farmers were doing this uh, sorting manually uh, at the field location also in the markets and simply they look at the cocoons and then uh, they look for some defect defects in that and then they sort it out uh, so we thought that uh, if we, if we develop this kind of intervention 
uh, we, we were uh, estimating that at least uh, 0.9 million farmers could be our uh, potential customer segment. Uh, next slide. Yeah, so we did around 108 uh, interviews, uh, as I mentioned, uh, so across uh, three different states, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, and uh, Ranchi, uh, Jharkhand. Uh, and uh, so we did some face-to-face -face interviews and also we interviewed some of them uh, through telephone. Uh, uh, so to find out actually the real problems and pain points and uh, what they perceive, uh, uh, whether this kind of uh, intervention will help them in their activities or not. Next slide. Yeah, so initially we started with this. Uh, so one hypothesis is... Uh, uh, considering farmers would be our uh, customer segment, sericulture farmers. So sericulture is actually growing this uh, silkworm cocoons in sheds or in farms. And we thought of uh, giving them a lot of value propositions. For example, if, if this solution can be developed, they can save their time in sorting at various places uh, in the field and also in the markets. And also this uh, cocoon markets are actually, uh, uh, I mean, uh, no, uh, subjected to price fluctuations and if we if we, if uh, farmers can use this technology and can have a better quality uh, lots uh, according to size shape and color then they can respond quickly uh, to these fluctuations and also since it is an automated device that we were proposing uh, we thought that it can also uh, you know save a lot of uh, investment in terms of labor costs and also, uh, you know, no headache of this managing labors, especially in the rural areas when you don't get enough labor uh, because it, it requires a lot of skills, especially you have to look at the cocoon uh, by cocoon. You have to look at the color, shape, size, uh, and uh, you have to sort it. So that's why so we initially thought of this farmers as our potential customer segments. But after doing, uh, you know, interviews, we found out something else. So next slide, please. Yeah, so what we did actually, we went to different places uh, in Tamil Nadu AP and we interviewed them in their field locations in the markets. Uh, next slide. Yeah, so this is what we found. So we assumed actually farmers are our customers, but it's not so. Uh, we found that it is not their pain point. Uh, so actual problems faced by these sericulture farmers are, are different in the field. So they, they have difficulty in feeding the worms at the correct stage of time because the, the entire lifetime of this uh, sericulture, uh, you know, worms is actually very less. According to 21 days, actually, it, it actually, uh, you know, produces the cocoon. So in those, uh, you know, early stage and larva stage, so we have to feed them huge amount of uh, mulberry leaves, uh, especially in the southern India. So and uh, also they, they are, uh, you know, subjected to this price fluctuations in the market. And also there are pest attacks, which is a major problem for them, and also unavailability of the labors. So we found that actually they are not going to take up this as a kind of solution because their problems are different. Uh, for example, temperature effects. So when you have higher temperatures, the productivity goes down, and also the cocoons uh, may not be of good quality. So all these are the major problems. Uh, next slide. Yeah, so apart from farmers, actually, we, we, we mapped all the stakeholders in this sericulture ecosystem. Apart from sericulture farmers, uh, we have cocoon breeders we, who actually breeds these worms, uh, silkworms. Uh, so uh, they, they actually supply these eggs, silkworm eggs, to the farmers. Uh, in fact, Central Silk Board, which is the apex body in this uh, silk sericulture, is involved in the trade of the silkworm eggs and culture to maintain the raw material bank. So these raw material banks are available all the districts uh, and they supply these inputs to the farmers. So they're, they're actually the main focus is on the pupae, not the silk quality. In fact, cocoon breeders are very much interested in the pupae, not in the silk. So thereby, so cocoon breeders are also not interested in sorting and grading uh, because the silk quality which you get is a kind of uh, you know phenotypic. I mean, it's actually visible to your eye. But in fact, if you look at the quality uh, inside, the, uh, also there may be some defects. So that is not their interest. And there are cocoon markets, government regulated cocoon markets in South India. So if you look at South India, 
the pakun uh, markets are highly regulated by government whereas in the north india it is different they are not regulated so here pakun quality inspectors who are the government officials uh, they fix the base price for the cocoon lots by looking at the quality of the cocoon lots i mean especially they look at the colors different varieties of uh, mulberry silk is there so yellow type i mean there are some genetic uh, you know diversity is also exists so this cocoon quality inspectors actually fix the price and uh, while fixing the uh, base price actually there may be conflicts between the uh, farmers and the traders traders means actually those who buy this uh, cocoons from the uh, farmers so they also don't have any pain point so they don't bother about this conflicts also that's why we also invalidated that cocoon quality inspectors may not be our customer segment in the sense government markets may not be our uh, potential customer segment go to the next slide yeah so uh, when this particular traders especially those are called reelers so cocoons Uh, uh from the market they buy and they reel silk out of it so they they are called reelers so cocoon reelers especially interested in this kind of uh, you know uh, uh, i mean uh, activity where uh, good quality silk they are expecting out of these lots so from trading of uh, from buying of these cocoons from the market place till they reel so there are multiple stages they are actually sorting these cocoons uh, according to the quality so they simply uh, touch uh, these cocoons and they Uh, they they can sense based on their skill uh, they can sense what is the quality and what is the quantity of the silk they can get out of it for example if you have good quality a quality silk cocoons so uh, from 7 kg of cocoons you get 1 kg of silk but if it is you know uh, having defective cocoons it may go up to 12 kg depending upon the ratio of your defective cocoons in the lots so uh, uh, reelers are actually the you know uh, the takers for this kind of technology because they are the ones who actually use this silk on cocoons and then they make silk out of it so uh, so grade wise uh, processing of these uh, you know cocoon lots actually requires more storage capacity and working capital and also this uh, the lifetime of this uh, silk on cocoons is only 14 days so if you don't use them and if you don't process them within 14 days actually you pay inside the cocoon actually lay the eggs and again it will come out of out of the uh, you know cocoon so piercing out of it so then it may not be reliable so if you if you are uh, having larger portion of uh, non reliable cocoons it is also waste of uh, you know of, uh, raw material for them uh, also the storing uh, requires lot of problems i mean smell comes uh, when there, there are defective cocoons and also lot of rodents and insects also damage this cocoon for example ants rats so all those things actually uh, you know the pierce the cocoon and they eat the pupae so which is also problematic for them so that's why we found out that reelers can be our potential customers next slide so if you look at the customer workflow so for the reeler so reeler actually buys the cocoons from the market and then they do manual sorting and they subject these cocoons to reeling unit where reeling happens and they get raw silk but while reeling also the reelers actually the women employed in this reeling activity also sorts on the machine itself so which takes considerable amount of time so to i mean if you have a proper effective sorting solution or grading solution in the first place you can eliminate this you know online sorting means on the machine sorting so which is our uh, proposal uh, for this kind of uh, intervention go to the next slide yeah so another uh, set of customer segment is uh, training officers sericulture uh, research institutes and training institutes are there under the uh, central silk board so who actually takes care of this technology upgradation in the sericulture ecosystem uh, especially this technology so the accurate sorter grader actually falls into the uh, post cocoon technology uh, because uh, after uh, you know you get the cocoons from the field you sort it and grade it and you process it for the reeling process and uh, so the, they they fear lot of a lot of this technology upgradation and also technologies or innovations especially uh, for this cocoon sorting in the markets training centers and common facility centers so they also don't have uh, this efficient methods of uh, mechanized cocoon sorting based on multiple quality parameters if you look at uh, silk worm uh, cocoons you know the, there is lot of parameters you have to check in for example the quantity of silk based on the you know sericin content and also the length of silk that you can reel out of it Uh, so reliability, so all those things, and the denier. Denier is another important parameter where you 
measure the thickness of the silk that you get out of it. So all these important parameters are necessary when you train, uh, you know, workforce, especially in the sericulture. It is important to have a better quality of silk out of the cocoons they produce. Next slide. Yeah, so therefore, uh, I mean, uh, in the final uh, attempt, I mean, uh, at the end, we we, uh, we validated uh, silk reelers who are the traders actually buy cocoons in the market and also sericulture training centers uh, can be our potential customer segments. You know, farmers and quality inspectors and cocoon breeders we invalidated. And also we found out, you know, how to, you know, uh, you know, get customer relations. Example, you, you can have product exhibitions or demos at cocoon markets and also after sales service to, you know, retain your uh, existing customers and also running your referral schemes for uh, you know to expand your sales and channels also we identified sericulture training centers can be one of our channel uh, to have this uh, uh, you know expansion for the uh, you know proposed intervention and the value propositions also some of the propositions were invalidated based on the interviews so key activities actually involves you know a lot of uh, things like development of sensors and prototype fabrication field trials and all those things uh, so finally, we came to silk reelers and sericulture training centers as our potential customer segments. Next slide, please. Yeah, so finally, so reelers, they need more accurate sorting methods for producing high quality raw silk, which will fetch them better price in the market. So this is a big enough problem because actually, uh, you know, a lot of uh, high quality silk we still import from other countries. So that's why this is a big enough problem worth solving. But the customer discovery is not enough because actually we want to validate the customer segments uh, in terms of, you know, when you develop a prototype, actually, what is the kind of techno economics, especially, you know, what is a payback and, you know, what is the other important financial parameters, indicators are required for this is not yet, uh, you know, developed. So it's very important. And uh, so it's a good problem solution fit. But the thing is, it needs further, you know, examination of, you know, how much they can save if they, uh, invest in this kind of intervention. So all those things has to be done. Uh, next slide. Yeah, so consolidated learnings. I mean, uh, so when you want to develop a technology and when you want to address a rural market, so you should have empathy towards the customer, which is a key success, you know, in terms of, you know, technology development and also technology penetration in the rural markets. Always focus on inherent reasons actually they may not tell you so what is the exact reason but you have to find out you have to dig deeper and you have to always ask why so then only you will be able to understand the actual problem and also pivoting uh, you know is important so it will help you in identify the right customer segment and also you have to gather enough evidence before starting a business otherwise uh, i mean one may fail uh, yeah so next slide Yeah, so where uh, these uh, startups will operate, basically, uh, you know, uh, this uh, technology-based startups, either technology as a product or technology as a service, so all of them will operate in these rural markets. I mean, uh, so you have to identify the possibilities and you have to, uh, you know, gather enough evidence so that the customers uh, will have this uh, willingness to pay for your product or willingness to pay for your service. And also in these days, actually, so these entrepreneurs actually are willing to take risk and, you know, they can put ideas into practice and they want to seize these opportunities. So at this juncture, actually, it is very important to, you know, exactly go to the root cause of the problem and identify your correct customer segment. And, uh, you know, startups understanding of customer is also often limited uh, to certain regions because, you know, uh, so many things actually, uh, you know, Im impact your uh, understanding and also insights because of local language, local people. So they affect a lot, actually. So you have to understand them very well so that you can generate enough evidence to, you know, develop or maybe to, you know, uh, transfer your technology to this rural markets. So sometimes these solutions are successful in addressing the need, but at what level also you have to be very careful. For example, in the case of our Kapun Sartar Grader, initially we thought of uh, developing this uh, for entire India. So pan-India we were thinking. Uh, but if you look at the, you know, uh, the ecosystem, it is entirely different when you compare South India and North India. Example, in South India, you only have mulberry type silk, whereas your silk cocoons are traded in quantities, kgs. But where you go to, when you go to North India, so there are three different types of uh, silk varieties. For example, Eri, Muga uh, uh, and uh, Tassar. 
where these cocoons are traded in numbers, not in kgs. So entirely different. Here in South India, you have regulated markets, which are actually operated by government. But where you, when you go to North India, these are not regulated. Actually, in fact, a lot of middlemen are involved in the trading of the cocoons. So you have to be very specific, actually, at what scale you want to operate, at, at what region you want to, you know, address this, you know, uh, problem, and you want to solve this problem and try to develop the solution. Whether it is a local, whether it is pan India, whether it is international, it is very, very important because when you move out of your ecosystem, uh, regional ecosystem, everything changes. Actually, their willingness to pay and the social fabric, everything changes. So that's why it is very, very important to understand all these points, all these factors before you know entering into the market. Next slide, please. Yeah, what startups can do. So definitely uh, there is a huge need for this kind of innovative solutions, uh, which, which benefit larger section of the society. And uh, it can be, uh, you know, uh, in terms of uh, assistive technology, it can be some sort of uh, economic upliftment or drudgery removal. It can be anything, but a lot of innovative solutions are required for the rural areas. And, you know, it should be low cost. I mean, in terms of affordability and access, all these things are very, very essential. And uh, so technology startups definitely play a crucial role in accomplishing this because they have this uh, potential for scalability and, you know, uh, you know, they are adopted to, you know, these social conditions, uh, whereas larger companies may not have this kind of, uh, you know, inclination. And also there is a lot of government support. Uh, if you look at Startup India, which was started in 2016, a lot of incubators, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, in, uh, innovation systems are also in place which are actually supporting this growth of startup business and also which is start, I mean, generating a lot of uh, employment opportunities for the uh, skilled, uh, uh, I mean, engineers. Next slide, please. Yeah, if you look at the challenges, especially the technology startups for rural India, uh, access to working capital is a big challenge, although it is applicable to in general uh, startups, but in rural uh, areas, I mean, especially it is very difficult because you are actually focusing a set of customers, actually you are focusing a set of region, uh, whereas actually your volume of operations is very, very less. And also, uh, especially in the case of uh, rural based, I mean, uh, rural based technology startups, you have a lot of information gap. So customers don't know what is existing in the market, where can they get this kind of products and where can, where they can develop this kind of uh, technologies on their own. So it is not existing. So there's a lot of gap now, uh, although it is vanishing slowly, but still, uh, you know, customers don't have access to information. There's a lot of divide, digital divide. And also there is diversity when you travel across 15 to 25 kilometers needs changes. And also so that uh, your technology also needs to be customized according to their needs. And uh, if you look at the products uh, and markets, I mean, uh, there is a lot of uh, you know interest, but uh, the level of willingness to pay is very, very low in, if you consider rural customers. Uh, I mean, the competitive landscape is there because if you, if you are entering existing markets, because there are different markets, example, new market, existing market, if you are entering into existing market, there's a lot of competition from other startups. It can be large companies which are already in the business and uh, technology penetration adoption is very, adoption is very, very less if you are entering into a new market because uh, you know, the, the consumers already have a lot of, you know, current ways of handling that problem and they have some expertise in this uh, problem solving. So you have to, you know, convince them uh, with the proper evidence so that they can be, you know, convinced to pay for your solution or service. And also, as I mentioned, low volume of operations uh, may not be economically feasible for the startups to run, but still it's a challenge. And uh, retaining your customer base in rural areas is very, very difficult because you need to reach them for, uh, you know, a lot of after sales surveys, sales surveys, and again, uh, maybe troubleshooting. And also they may not have the skill set to operate your instruments or solutions. So thereby, you know, training, you know, awareness creation uh, and, uh, you know, knowledge transfer is very, very essential. And uh, other uh, important points is, you know, uh, always qualified employees, uh, uh, for your startups is a big challenge because uh, because the volume of operations is very very less so that um, startups may not be able to pay them uh, good amounts and uh, there's a lot of complex regulatory environment across india but uh, in the case of rural startups again it will become much more complex 
so that's why it is important to look at all these factors and then enter into rural markets next slide please yeah that's it from my side i'll uh, open the floor for any queries or comments thank you thank you all yeah so if there are any questions or comments uh, we'll be very happy to hear them yes sir. thank you sir so any questions from the from the participants you can post on the chat box or you can unmute yourself and you can ask uh, so we have one question from sumitra on the chat box so yeah, sumitra I can be uh, sort of uh, last i mean it was asked around 544 and after that shrinivas spent uh, four or five yes, slides sir. in fact no issue sir so, sumitra do you want to go ahead and yeah. unmute yourself and go ahead with your question if you have a follow up question then maybe you can ask sumitra Yes. Yes. Sir. So I'm asking in the point of startups, uh, st in the point of view of startups. So what are the difficulties faced by the startups in understanding mm -hmm. the rural issue or rural standpoint? Yeah. So uh, as Shini was uh, mentioned, I mean, uh, from uh, customer discovery onwards, I mean, I mean uh, the uh, whether it's capital availability, whether it's understanding of the market. Uh, I mean, each each of those issues. is uh, of course challenging in any startup but for rural context it becomes even more challenging because uh, to find information to uh, identify the uh, customer all of those become somewhat more challenging uh, because of the current uh, sort of uh, web of uh, practices which are already existing in the rural domain so so that i think is a major challenge to understand the overall rural ecosystem itself uh, requires a certain bit of uh, assimilation and Uh, uh spending some time there before you can start uh, articulating a startup there thank you uh, sir do you want to add something yeah that's it sir i mean uh, most of the time actually you have to you know uh, understand the problem carefully instead of uh, you know trying to get i mean get into the solution directly so i think 90% of the problem lies in identifying the correct problem itself so if you if you target that uh, with all the uh, points taken into the consideration for example customer base and you know what is the you know you have to understand entire ecosystem so th there may be for example if farmer is willing to uh, take this solution but uh, he may not be paying actually he may not be uh, willing to pay so th someone else may be paying uh, maybe uh, some uh, non banking financial corporation uh, who is interested in giving the loans so so all these things are very important actually who is the decision maker who will use it who will pay for it who is opposing it for example in my case for example uh, so we thought of uh, training institutes would i mean uh, object this kind of uh, intervention because it's a kind of competition right i mean if if i develop uh, exact i mean accurate uh, sorter grader uh, training institutes may not be required right i mean if if i develop this kind of intervention so i can avoid training so it is a kind of uh, you know it is a kind of sabotage so who will object this so you have to understand the entire ecosystem carefully uh, that is the you know crux of the problem so then definitely you will be able to reach the customer uh, i mean correct uh, target customer segment yeah thank yes. you yes sri nivas uh, this is uh, kalarani from uh, tirupati actually i wanted to ask you when you are using this automated sorter to sort the cocoons as you mentioned there are so many parameters like size or the quality spoilage or the color everything how can we handle all those parameters together to sort a good quality uh, cocoon yeah yeah so yeah to to tell you actually we we haven't developed anything i mean there is no such kind of solution in no, the no, proposal i am asking how should we propose like with different uh, different types of sorters maybe we we need to plan so that one one parameter should be controlled in one uh, step i think right yes 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 yeah. a lot of sensors are required for example as you mentioned uh, mm -hmm. the, the length of the silk that you can reel is actually yeah. uh, uh, you know and that is one and also the color right. uh can be can be done by optical sensor so a lot of sensors are required a lot of you know integration is also required because uh, the quality of the silk is actually not uh, one uh, based on one parameter it is uh, dependent upon multiple parameters yes so, yes uh, so there are a b c d type of classification which tells you uh, based on uh, the length of your uh, uh, length of your uh, see, uh, real, uh, silk that you can feel 
and also mm-hmm. the quantity i mean uh, the grams of silk that you can reel so mm-hmm. that depends uh, on uh, you know type of floats and all the, also various uh, other varieties of silk so but as are can... now as on now there should be some sorters at least based on the size i think right um uh, yeah there are uh, there is one sorter by this uh, central uh, silk, silk research institute based in mysore okay. uh, they have okay. uh, one sorter based on the size only uh, okay. and also they, they added some feature uh, where uh, there is some light under beneath the table uh, where you can uh, yeah see the color actually actual color uh, but okay. this is two different things so size uh, based on size yeah. is one instrument and based on color is one instrument so but this is manual so the okay. the the color you have to see manually so so yes. upon by upon you have to see which is time intensive and also labor intensive and also you need a lot of skills to look at actually so right. if you if you miss any dark spot for example there are some cocoons uh, which is urinated cocoons or oozy infected cocoons mm-hmm. where you have a lot of uh, dark spots Yes. Uh, when you reel silk out of it, actually, it is uh, of not good low, quality. Yeah, uh, low quality. Yes. Low quality. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, thank you sir. Uh, any other questions from the participant side? Yes. So we also reached uh, six o'clock. So. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Professor, and thank you so much, Srinivas, sir, for your time, uh, for the for our knowledge Tuesday session. It was really an insightful session, uh, a different perspective for us. Uh, how what technology startups uh, from the from a rural point of side work. So uh, thank you so much, Prof, and thank you so much, Srinivas, sir, for your time today. Yeah, thank you all. Thank you, and uh, yes, and one more thing, I need to check with you, sir. So uh, as a practice, we'll be we are uploading our knowledge Tuesday sessions in our YouTube channel. Hope that is fine with you. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yes. So, yeah. So the participants, I request you to kindly fill up the feedback form for us, uh, for us to improve the upcoming sessions. Uh, thank you so much for joining.